Hi there and welcome to my YouTube channel for those of you that are new. Um, today I'm going to be talking about Global EQ, the do's and don'ts, and it doesn't matter what digital amp you have, whether you're using a Kemper or a Quad Cortex, or in my case, Veilton GP200 is what I use most of the time, but I do have a Kemper, I've got a Tonex and a Boss and a this and a that, um, but I just want to address Global EQ. Before I get into that, for those of you that have just stumbled across this video, I should probably tell you a little bit about myself and um, why my opinion may or may not matter. We're all different, we all have different ideas about tone, but just to give you a little bit of a background. Um, my name is Paul Bond, I currently play guitar in War of the Worlds, which is one of the UK's biggest touring acts. We get to do a, a Pink Floyd style humongous show. Um, over all the arenas in the UK and some places in Europe as well. Um, War of the Worlds was one of the biggest selling albums of all time here in the UK. Uh, so the show is absolutely huge, so I get to play in that. Uh, I also uh, produce, record and mix and master in my studio here, Shabby Road, uh, which is a lot of fun. I also teach audio production at the University of Westminster at master's level. Um, when I'm not doing all that, since the late 80s, I've been a guitar tech as well. Most recently, I was working with Nuno Betancourt at the Black Sabbath Stroke Aussie Back to the Beginning show. So I was looking after him, as well as lending a helping hand to all the other guys in the super group. So people like Jakey Lee and Rudy Sarza, although I didn't do a hell of a lot with them. But anyway, but over the years, I've worked with Prog Supergroup ELP, I've worked with Trivium, Cradle of Filth, Nevermore, Children of Bodom, Lacuna Coil, it just goes on and on, I can't even remember. Highly Suspect is another one I've been working with recently. Uh, I work with a lot of people. I'm telling you this so that you, <laughs> it just gets across that I know my tone. I know my guitar tone. I, I honestly don't think I'm the best guitar luthier out there um, with other touring techs. I think one of the reasons that I keep getting called back, uh, first of all, is I'm good under pressure. When You earn your money guitar teching when things go wrong. But more importantly, I, I'm good at dialing in guitar tones. I think that's why I keep getting asked back. Um, so I'd like to address global EQ because I'm seeing so many comments, so many questions. How should I set up my global EQ on my digital amp? Again, it makes no difference what kind of digital amp you're using. It's the same theory. Um, I'm going to be using the software on the Veilton just to show you the concept, but it's all the same thing. So I'm seeing questions. Um, I saw one just today on Facebook on one of the Veilton groups. Uh, how should I set up my uh, global EQ for live shows? There's only one answer to that. It's like, don't touch it. <laughs> Unless you, if you're asking the question, then don't touch it. Global EQ should only really be used if you really know what you're talking about. And hopefully showing you this video, you'll get a better understanding of, of, of what it's there for and what not to do. If you're asking the question, just be very, very wary. Now, as I said, we all have different views on how our tone is. Honestly, when I worked with Nuno Betancourt, I could not believe how he set his Marshall up. Um, I, I know he's not very public on his settings and stuff like that, but they're weird, trust me. But it really works for him. It works for Nuno's fingers and those very specific Bill Lawrence pickups that he has in his guitar, and that whole combination between his fingers, his brain, his guitar, and his pickups means that he can use these wacky settings on his Marshall amp. It's really, really odd. So there's no one size fits all. That's the first most important thing. Um, but I'm gonna give you some do's and don'ts. So when you buy your digital amp, the, well, I'm presuming most of the time on, on any model, these will all be flat, the global EQ. Let me just go to the software on the Veilton. For those of you that have a Veilton, um, you know, you can switch between the amps and the cabs and all these things. But if you go up to the wrench here, uh, I'll just get that in view a bit better. We're going to go to global EQ. Now, most of the time, this will be a flat line across there. 
there will be no oh, I've done it now I? there will be no uh, kind of movements this way and I'm just going to put that back it will just be a straight line across there it's generally considered for humans we can hear between 20 hertz here at the low end and 20k up here at the high end that's the real whistly stuff once we start getting beyond 20k um, that's the stuff that goes out of human hearing that's the stuff that dogs can hear and we can't um, typically younger people um, can hear in this region very well and above um, that's why you get the anti-teenage devices, if you know about those. Like on street corners, you might hear this faint whistle. It's because teenagers can hear it. It's really bloody annoying. Um, but adults uh, don't tend to hear those frequencies because as we get older, those high frequencies start rolling off a bit. Um, so when you get your digital amp, you're going to have a flat line across there. Um, now, as you can see, I do actually alter my global EQ, and there's a very specific reason for that, and that is guitar amps, traditional, let's say, valve amps, whether it's your Messy Boogies, your Marshall, your Soldano, or your Fenders, the, the tube amps, valve amps, as we would say in the UK, go through a speaker cabinet. And typically, at the low end, the, the, these are really by design to really emphasize the mid frequencies because that's the place that electric guitars sit. So we actually don't want any of that really, really low end stuff because that's where the bass sits. And even if you roll up loads and loads of bass on your amp, let me tell you, when you get to the live show or in the recording studio, the engineer's just gonna shave all that off so that the guitar can sit in the correct, um, piece of the pie, if you will. So we leave the bass frequencies for the bass guitar so we don't get in the way. And it's really gratifying when we're just trying a guitar amp. It's really nice to crank up the low end and feel it. And the old trouser flapper, as we used to say, get, get your jeans like moving, get some air moving. But in actual fact, for recordings and live shows, you don't want it in there. And guitar amps, as I say, will roll off, you know, sometimes around... 90 hertz something like that um even 100 it wouldn't be unusual and that's why you see this very gentle slope off on my global eq um so we could set that i, I don't know um, let's put it somewhere around 70. feel free if you want to copy these settings i'm not going to touch anything in the middle here and i'll get onto the reason why also with guitar amps they tend to start rolling off around let's say at the top 7k so if you wanted to be really really safe let's do this let's call it 7000 hertz that's what seven kilohertz is so you could have a slope off there and a slope off there and what that's doing is it's emulating what guitar cabinets do now if you were using your digital amp as i do sometimes on the war of the worlds um, for using my acoustic sonic where I'm also using acoustic guitar there would be an argument just to keep it flat because you probably do want more body I'd probably still leave the low end like that but I might not have it rolled off so much on the high end okay so I think really for most of you that are going to be playing electric guitar with your digital amps these settings will be in the ballpark the right thing to do as far as I'm concerned, and I will fight to the death on this one, don't alter any of these. You see this one, two, three, four, these frequencies here, you don't want to be doing any of this. Please in the comments, let me know if you do and give me a really good reason why you do. Um, but I would say that it's absolute uh, bollocks. Don't do it because what will happen is, okay, the, the maybe, one reason for it hopefully you know what an fr fr cab is uh, that's a, a specially designed cabinet for these digital amps that we have that are a full frequency um space it's, it's essentially like a little miniature pa system again completely flat like unlike a guitar and speaker cab they won't roll off naturally like that they're completely flat and if you had a really shit sounding frfr or if you're playing through let's say your studio speakers that sound utterly shit 
you may want to compensate by doing this. But the problem is, especially in the recording environment, you're affecting the tone. So even if your studio speakers sound shit and you're tailoring um, your digital amp to sound better, you're actually recording this weird funky tone, which will be really, really bad. Funky in a bad way, not a good way. Um, so I would argue, and again, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, you don't touch the middle frequencies at all. No bumps in there whatsoever. If you're going to do anything, and even this is debatable, just to do that, because there's nothing that you can do there that you can't do here. I can alter the bass and the middle and the treble and the presence. I can do all that on my, my amp settings. So what you're effectively doing, if you're altering the global EQ, you're, you're telling the unit that, Every decision that I make when I'm dialing in the sound on the amp, I've already altered something on the global side. This global, global meaning everything, every single amp setting that I have now could have this weird kind of EQ curve. Let's suppose you, you want loads of low end and you're scooping the middles out. That means every single amplifier that I dial up on my digital amp has got this weird frequency curve. And what can happen is you can start chasing things. For those of you that record at home, it would be the equivalent of putting a weird EQ curve on your master bus when you're recording. Uh, and then you're starting to EQ every individual channel to try and make it work. And you're like, oh, I'm getting this honky sound and I can't get rid of it. Well, it's probably because you put all the shit on, on the master fader. It's the same thing. So take it from me. Leave these where they are. Uh, I'll put these all back to zero. Let's put that back to zero. So the middle frequencies leave alone. If you want to do anything, and by the way, this is debatable. <laughs> Just shave off some low, shave off some top. Um, as for, you know, I see questions. There was one I saw on Reddit, and I don't say this to embarrass anyone, and, you know, because we're all at different stages in playing the guitar and learning our sounds, but on Reddit I saw one, what will be the correct global EQ settings for a rehearsal room? Well, there's no fucking answer to that. <laughs> no... A, it depends what guitar you're using. Um... What are you running it through? Are you going through an FFR, FRFR cab? Are you putting it through the PA system? Are you just using it as, I don't know, uh, a glorified effects unit to go through your existing send and return on your... There's so many things. So the only correct answer to what global EQ settings I should use in it is like nothing. Don't touch it at all. Um, on the bigger shows, I'm lucky enough to do big, huge shows. Let the guy at the front of house do that. And I, I recognise not everybody's in a position where they're doing big shows where you've got a front of house guy on the mixing desk. But if you do, leave all that decision to him or her. Plenty of good female uh, sound engineers, by the way. Uh, let the sound engineer deal with sculpting the tone. They know what the room sounds like. You don't when you're on the stage. So they're could be an argument if you've got to a wanky little club and it's got a weird resonant frequency in that particular corner of the room and you happen to know that it's, you know, around 150 uh, hertz, maybe you would do that, you know, a little, little peak dip there just at a certain frequency. There is an argument for that, but I would say you've really got to know what you're doing. Um, you've got to totally understand frequencies because, and, and for God's sake, once you've left that club, put it back to where it was because you're going to, you know, you're just going to be again fighting your tone forevermore. So I hope this has been interesting. Um, it might be controversial and I'd love to know once again, if any of you think I'm talking utter bullshit, let me know. But I just want to put an end to this. Leave your global EQ alone. If you want to do anything, a bit of that and a bit of that, Nothing more.